Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. In today's video I will share with you what I consider is one of the most common questions on my channel, which is how I record the scope cam footage. I will share with you the equipment I use, the installation process, the tuning of the image, and also my camera settings. So it's gonna be a video packed with information, so please stay tuned to the end and with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. All right, let's start talking about the equipment I use. So I start, when I start recording seriously, I bought the side shot. I think most of you guys, if you are watching this video, are gonna be familiar with this system. This is the phone uh, side shot. There is another version of this for the GoPro, and they use a backbone modified GoPro, but the price is out of my league. So I decided going with this. Initially I was filming with the phone, but there are some downside to film with the phone, which we will talk about in a little bit but with this was the system that I start filming even using my phone and um, the downside is the slow motion that you get on your phone it's not as good as the one that you can get with the with the action camera right let's talk about the second system that that I use which is this one and here I have everything installed but we will go through installation later this is the Eagle Vision and this is the one that have the 25% of the light going to your eye and 75% of the light going to the camera. To me, this is the best system to use if you really want the best image you can get on the camera. The best clarity that you will get on your footage, you will achieve with this. The reason is that 75% of the light goes into the camera. This system is very interesting because it's modular. So here you see you can attach a phone, you can attach a point and shoot camera they have for the Sony RX100, which I have the camera, but I never install it. And well, you can do this. Oh, they have for the GoPro, which is exactly what I bought. I bought the GoPro version, but this is not the GoPro. And downside on this system is exactly that 25% of the light is going to your eye. So if you don't have a good vision, if you are struggling watching through the scope or you don't have a good scope, because that's the other point here, if you don't have a good scope, you are cutting the light that goes to you as a shooter and that can be a challenge. I know people that don't like this, especially because when you look through the scope, it's like you're looking through something completely different is the lights will be reduced and you may struggle seeing your crosshair. So this is something to keep in mind. But if you wanted to know what I'm using, this is the system I'm using today. So what else I'm using? And now enters this little camera here. All right, what is this? This is not a GoPro. This is the Firefly 8SE 90 degree lens. It's an action camera and you can order from Amazon. So all the pros that I'm using on this video, I will put a link on the description below so you guys can buy or you have a way to get it. But this is the action camera that makes everything happen. So this little camera gives me HD view at 120 feet per second. And this is not the GoPro. With the GoPro, people can get 240 frames did i say feet per second before frame per second fps but it's different f so frames per second so with that 120 frames per second is what i use for doing this slow motion you can see the pellet in flight and everything so advantages of this little camera is uh, it's cheap you can get it for less than 200 dollars usually around 150 I have seen it in 130, but it's really cheap. Disadvantage. 
you don't get the top of the line image so but it's so good and for the price it's really hard to invest on something else so i've been really tempted to go with the gopro with the backbone system but it's too expensive i tried once the gopro with the lens that eagle vision has and the image was not as crisp as the image that i get with this camera let me just stop here because recently uh, the Egdon Lecce channel was showing to me that the Eagle Vision is now offering a new lens. There is a new version for the GoPro and the resolution is way better, but I haven't tried it. So, advantages of this camera is cheap. Also, you don't need to change anything. Out of the box, it will work. That's a big plus. With the GoPro, you have to remove the lens. You have to tune the lens. So here, plug and play. Take it out of the box put it on your scope footage and start recording so we will go through the settings that i use to record but this is the workhorse of all my videos this little cheap camera so one of the downside of this camera is that it's coming from china when you order it it will ship from china and the shipping can take months so i know people being ordered for three months waiting for the camera others like in three weeks they get the camera so but you have to be patient it will arrive but it will take time so the camera will arrive in, in in a package like this and inside you have a lot of accessories bunch of accessories one pro tip is it comes with one battery if you order you can order an extra battery so when you are hunting you don't have to run out of battery that would be really bad so i order like two more extra batteries that I always carry with me when I'm hunting but in here you have a lot of accessories and I think one of the best accessories is this one the case it comes already with a case these cases are not really expensive you can order one extra case uh, from Amazon for around $15 I think I ordered another one that, that you see on my Eagle Vision so I have two one pro tip about this case is, you see this one have the cover red. This is an aluminum clip that I ordered because the plastic one, it will break. It will snap out of this. So I will put a link on the description for the lid. And the last accessory that I want to show you is this. What is this? This is an adapter that I built so you can connect the case to the side shot or to the Eagle Vision. Without this, you are not gonna be able to connect the case to the side shot. That's why it's really important, this adapter. This adapter is a 3D print adapter that I built myself, but the link is in the description below, so you can order if you want for both Eagle Vision and side shot. And with that out of the way, let's jump ahead into the second part of this video, which is the installation process. All right, let's begin the installation process. So for this part, I will fully demonstrate how you will mount the Firefly into the side shot. I'm not going to show the installation on the Eagle Vision system because the process is gonna be really similar. After you finish uh, watching on how I install the Firefly in a side shot, it will be really easy to translate that process into a Eagle Vision mount. All right, let's jump into the installation. So the tools you will need for this installation is gonna be just a screwdriver. First thing we need to do is here, we remove these three big screw that attach this plate for the phone to the other body of the side shot. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And with the three screws removed, now, this piece will come apart. Put this aside, you are not gonna use this anymore. Just put this aside. And you will end it up with something like this. So here you have the three holes for the three screws that we just removed. And that is when the adapter that I built come into place. So 
here you will have you will, so when you buy this adapter you will receive it with the with the screws and the nuts already so just remove these screws from here and when you remove the screw you will have two pieces for the adapter one is this separator here and the actual plate so let's go ahead and remove these screws and with the screws removed now be careful because you will have the separator just put the separator aside for now and then you will have the two the four nuts here so take the nuts out of the plate so now check the piece and you will see that I, there is a hole here that will that will be used so we can align the part with the side shot you see it inserted so you will insert this cut out here so that will ensure that everything is centered and now you will locate your holes these three holes are meant for these screws that we remove at the very beginning so let's go ahead and install these screws And then you will end up with with this part so which is your side shot body and the adapter all right now we are going to attach the case to the adapter so before we continue let me just say because here i'm not showcasing this exactly as it comes uh, from the factory there is a seal here because this is a waterproof case so you will need to remove the black there is a black plastic seal here that is attached to the case using four screws on the inside so remove those remove the black seal and then you will need a three millimeter drill bit to open a little bit those holes a little more i think probably it's a 2.5 millimeter what you have there but you need a three millimeter drill bead because the screws that we are going to use are three millimeter screws. So you should be you should be able to just slide those screws in the case like this. All right. So let's work on the orientation. In order to attach the the case to the adapter, you will see a cutout here. All right. This cutout is so you have access to this button on the front of the case you see this button here this button is important because this is how I turn on and off the camera so when you attach the camera you wanted to orient it the this cut out facing the the corner of the button so you will be able to you will be able to let me see if I can show you you will be able to press that button here and it's not going to be blocked by by the adapter all right so with that in mind, the next step will be just slide one screw, the separator. So this separator, the idea is so we block the light that comes from the sides. So you just put the separator like this. So typically I go in diagonal, in a diagonal I put the first screw here. Well, I have two screws in a diagonal now you can insert the separator from top just make sure because and now following the orientation that I show you just insert these two on the holes that you will have over there and you will end it up with something like this right so now I just put these nuts, the little nuts on the cutout and just tie the screw. So one little trick to how I mount this is I just slide the nuts first, then put my finger and turn it over so the, the nut doesn't fall and just put one screw at a time. You don't have to really tie this so really hard.
All right, so and there you go. Now you have your case mounted to the body of the side shot with the adapter, with the adapter. So as I said, as I mentioned at the very beginning, it's gonna be the same procedure, the one that you will follow here with the Eagle Vision. If you had the Eagle Vision, with the Eagle Vision you will have this part here that is the GoPro attachment. Typically the GoPro goes directly into this part. So what I did is I have a different adapter. This one is thicker, so here we, we don't have the separator is built in into that piece, into this piece. But the idea would be you just attach the camera case into the adapter, well first the adapter into the GoPro mount and then you, you will be able to attach the, the camera case into the adapter, but it's similar to what we just did. All right, with this now, we can just slide our camera. Oh, one thing is, there is a seal rubber band here, like a gasket, because remember, this is a waterproofing case. So I removed that one, I don't need that, because sometimes it's really hard on the camera, it's trying to see, we don't need waterproof in the camera. And I will show you another pro tip that I did here, so. And there you go, we have the camera secure on the side shot adapter. So one thing I wanna show you is this. So here, <laughs> I did this hole with the, we heat and it turns out really bad. <laughs> it's ugly, it's disgusting, but again, you don't need waterproofing. So this is so I can access the video out port. So let me show you on this other case, it's a little better, but this will allow me to mount a monitor, external monitor on the camera, so I can adjust, um, don't have to hook it up in, a, in my TV or something, so I have an external monitor. This is exactly what we are gonna do now. We're gonna adjust the image on the side shot, so you get most of the focus that you can get with your scope. All right, with that out of the place, let's go into tuning. All right, let's start uh, talking about the tuning of the image. So the first thing I do when I am start tuning the, the image for sharpness is to turn the ocular piece or the diopter all the way in. So just take it all the way in. So I don't know if you know that whenever you get a scope with this, you adjust the crispness of the reticle to your eye. So this is something similar what we are gonna do with the scope camera. Now we need to adjust the reticle, the sharpness of the reticle, but this time to the camera. So the camera is gonna be our eyes, right? So pro tip here is if you have external monitor, I will say use it, use something, or you can just watch in the back of the camera, but you are not gonna be able probably to see exactly with the, the resolution that you have in the camera display as uh, if you were using an external monitor. So I will use external monitor right now because I have it, but if you don't have it, one tip is just film a short clip Go to your computer, check how uh, good you, you have, and then come back. It's gonna be a time consuming process, all right? Let's jump into it. All right, now, with your diopter all the way in, we will start the tuning process. To tune in, just position your camera there and, and see if you are centered. So I don't know, probably you can even see in here that there is there is a play here i think i would be able to do a 3d print part that help me center this because you see a little bit of movement here and you lose the center so probably you need to screw but again the 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 reason is if you if you just start recording here this is what you get this is what you get really bad image all right 
let's start moving the diopter back a little bit. So I'm recording because I want you to see. I don't need to record because I have the external monitor, but I would like you to see the. So what I will do is I just do a little bit of a turn there, like probably one a full turn and check it again. All right, it's getting better. So I still see something black around the edges. So yeah, this little movement here will disappear when I finally adjust this knot. But what I'm checking is crispness. Is the crosshair crisp? Not really. I can make, I can do better. All right, let's do it again. Let's stick it out. Another half a turn. Let's put it back in and check. ONG. I think this looks already amazing. All right, let's tie this back in. And now let's play with the different magnification. So at 15 magnification, I still see a little bit of blurriness. This is a first focal plane. So the, even with my eye, if I reduce the magnification too much, I'm not gonna be able to see the crosshair. When I'm filming, I'm between 15 magnification and full magnif in full magnification, everything is looking great already. So let's um, let's do this. Let's aim at something, not at the sky. So I will find like this, this tree here. Uh, maybe it's too bad lit. Let me find another, like probably here. This light green so yeah here you can see how crisp the image is uh, actually is and let me see i'm out of focus right there finding the focus perfect focus i think so let me do a little another little tune which it will be let me just remove a do another small amount back because I think we can do better like probably a quarter to turn and check again I think that's way better so yeah the the key point here is this diopter but once you find your position you don't need to move it again that's it you do it once and leave it there. So let's see on 15 magnification. Oh yes, my crosshair still showing nice and crisp. Let me see if I can aim at something else. I don't have much around here, but I'm just trying to see if when I'm, I'm aiming and getting what I'm seeing on my eye, with my eye, if I'm getting in the camera. That's why monitor really, really, really helps doing this. And I think that's uh, really it. That's everything that we have. So this is a pro tip. After you have found the right uh, amount of space, the gap that you need to give to your scope, one thing that I like to do is to measure the distance so I will always be able to reproduce uh, this focus. So how I do, I just measure the gap, and then here I'm getting a read of about seven. So that's what I will use every time I use this combination of a scope and, and a scope cam. So I will give a gap of around seven, and I don't have to guess anymore. So guessing only happens once, all right? Okay, and finally, I would like to show you my camera settings. So here you can see my video resolution is 1080p, 100fps, video quality fine, super fine, field of view narrow. So here, sometimes I go between medium and narrow. I will just scroll and you guys can come back in the video and copy the settings.
I will just comment out when, when I see something that I really use. So far, those are the default that I have. So those are the video settings. Now we'll go to camera settings. These are here. So here, quick capture on is something that I really use a lot. What that means is when I turn the camera on, using the forward button here, the camera will start recording. Let me show you real quick. So you use long press this button and the camera turn off. You see, it's off. And by pressing this button here, that's why I have the access in the case. This button that I showed you before, by just tapping, you don't have to long press, just tapping, the camera will turn on, and you will see that it will start recording after two seconds. That is that setting. I use it a lot because I, I use only a single button here, so long press to shoot it down, and a quick tip when I see anyone, quick click, and then just wait a couple of seconds because I know camera will be recording and then immediately I start recording. This is how I use it. So if you want, you don't have to turn it off and on. You can just stop the video and start recording again, next video. So yeah, I say like a quick operation, but this camera is really simple. Let's go ahead and continue through the settings. So we were quick capture. That's what quick capture does. So delay off. So check the rest of the setting because that's how I have it. Pro tip, toward the end, You will see this is the last setting here. This is giving you very good information. The V115. This is the firmware version. So I will recommend you guys go to the this setting here and you check. You will have two options here, V or U. So this is an internal code that uh, the Eagle Vision is using depending on the internal board that that this camera was assembled. I, ha I have, uh, it's my understanding that the Chinese, they're using two type of board, the U and the V. But why is that not, what that letter, the first letter is important is when you go to their website, they will give you the firmware that, that relates to your camera. So if you had a V, you just download the V version. If you had a U, download the U version. Just make sure you have the latest upgrade because I noticed with the new firmware upgrade with this 115, my video quality is way better. So just make sure you have the latest version. If you're not getting the best image you can possibly get, ensure that you have the latest firmware. Well, that's everything for the camera settings. As you can see, the image quality is pretty good. For an action camera, it's pretty good. It's way better what you can get out of your phone. Even when your phone can do awesome videos, there is always image stabilization. Your crosshair will start moving a little bit. You are not going to be able to get 120 frames per second out of the phone. Even when my phone says that it can give you a super slow motion, it's not true. I'm not able to control that with the camera. Is this the best uh, scope camera uh, settings or scope camera gear that you can buy? I don't think so. I've seen images of the GoPro with the backbone and I think at 240 frames per second it's amazing what you can get. This is not the best but as you can see for the price I think it's very good and this is what I've been using always so will I will upgrade someday who knows but for now I'm very happy with the Firefly with the image that I'm getting also with the price, because I've been investing in a lot of equipment. One thing that I want to mention before I end the video, because probably this will happen to you. 
when you do all of this and then you check the footage, it's possible that you are not going to see exactly the image that I showed to you. Because there is one little component that I probably missed or didn't talk about it because I don't think it's the, it's the case. But it's a very important thing to have in mind when you are filming, which is your scope. The scope is going to provide another layer of glass that the camera is going to pick it up. If you have a scope where the glass is not as good, that will be reflected on your, on your videos. There has been a been debate, like people asking, why do you need a really expensive scope if you are just doing air gunning, you know, you are going 100 yards, why do you need? So for me, the answer is always, I'm filming. I treat that scope of mine as the lens that you see on this camera, which is almost around the same price. So if I am spending in a lens that much, why am I not going to spend on a scope that I use almost every day? That's why I decided to invest in a really, really high-end scope. I say really, really high-end. is The Tractoric is expensive. I don't think a lot of people can afford that scope. But again, why I have that scope? It's not because I want the super duper fissures, you know. It's a good scope, it's a great scope, but the reason for me was to film. So I get crystal clear image out of the scope. But there are very, very, very good scopes out there on the market right now. And that probably would be another thing for the video. But now that you know how to set the scope cam, next we're going to start looking into different scope and the different qualities that we can get out of the video. All right, and with that out of the way, I think we finished this. It was a long video, but I hope you really enjoyed this one. It's a, it's a, it's a theme that when I start filming, I couldn't find anything online. I couldn't find any information on how to set this up so I can see the image that I was uh, used to see from the good uh, big YouTubers. And well, it's something that I want to share so we can have more people posting and the community growing around the filming and YouTube. All right, everybody. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching. And as always, be safe. Bye.